Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series. The exact model for this one is Inspiron 15 3525. The regulatory model is a P112 F00 text. That information can be found on the BIOS or inside the on the bottom of the laptop, on the sticker, or on the box. And in this video, I'm gonna cover up how you can open it up and how you can upgrade the storage or replace the solid storage that it has, and what are the combination that you should have, and what are the advantage and disadvantage, and what are the maximum capacity for these ones. Just remember when you replace the main storage on here, you might wanna have to reinstall your Windows system again, so back up your files. I made a short video how to create your Windows 10 or 11 USB boot drive. I'll leave that link in the video description. Also made another video how to install your Windows properly on any of Dell laptops. Follow my installation of the Dell laptops so you can install the Windows without any bloatware, all those Candy Crush, all those extra affiliated games that it comes with it. I'll leave those links in the video description. In this video, so I'm just gonna do a demonstration and show you and explain. So first thing first, back up your files in case you wanna replace it and power it off, flip it upside down and I'll go over the tool. The only tool I'll be using is an iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best screwdrivers out there. You're gonna be using a Phillips number one. If you grab the Pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and some tweezers, a few other stuff. But if you're like me, just grab the basic set and for the opening tool, I like to use a guitar pick. Metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers because of the soft edges, you will not scratch the case and it's really tough, so it's durable. All right, with these two, we're gonna get it started. All right, on the bottom here, we're gonna see a whole bunch of screws. You're gonna remove all the screws except the screws on the back corners. We're not gonna touch these ones, we're gonna leave them for the last and I'll explain why. So it starts from the back mid, on the sides and on the front. So remove all of them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. All right, now that we removed the screws that we needed to, and the reason that I said don't remove these ones because these screws, they have a something called a C-lock. A C-lock is, it uh, goes on the screw on the other side that will prevent the screw coming out entirely. And it helps you to, it helps the screw and the cover to separate from the palm rest. So that's what it does. So as soon as I start rotating, you're gonna see a gap opening right there. There is a magic. And you wanna keep rotating until you hit few clicks and then you wanna stop, otherwise you're gonna get, it's flippy just by keep rotating all day. Do the same thing in here. Rotate, gap opening, keep rotating under your few clicks, and then you want to stop, All right? Once you have that one opened, you want to stick the guitar pick about two or three millimeters on the side in here, and then you want to just open it and twist it. You want to hear some click sounds. That's what you want to hear on the front, moving it around. Now go to the corners. You go to the other side. Once you leave the side and the front, you don't need to do the mid back. You just grab it from here, lift it up, wiggle it around, and it will release the bottom cover. All right, down here we can see the whole internals. We have the CPU heat pipe, and we have the RAM, the battery, the Wi Fi board, 2.5 inch storage in here. Yours, it might be empty, with they give you the screws for it, so you can remove the caddy and put it in and you have an NVMe SSD slot right in here. They give you a very short NVMe. These are not a really good quality NVMe's, but we can, we can change it to a better quality. So you don't need to disconnect the battery to do this upgrade, but if you want to be paranoid to disconnect the battery, you want to put it, your fingers on the side of the jack, and then you want to pull it backward, and the jack will get disconnected. If not, just put it back in, Make sure you put it in a straight inside the jack. Don't put it sideways, it has to pinch in straight. To remove the NVMe storage, you wanna remove one screw at the back here. This one is a Phillips, I believe, zero. Let me see if I get it right. Yeah, Phillips number zero, remove the screw at the back. 
and you want to grab this heat sink, pull it backward. There should be a thermal pad in here, but it's not reaching it, doesn't matter. And then the SSD will lift up in 45 degree angle, or when you pull it back, it will come with your heat sink. Pull it back like that. This is your PCI Express Kingston 256 gig. It's not gonna focus. Let's see if it's gonna focus. There you go. So there's your SSD right here. It's like a flimsy SSD, cheap SSDs. I recommend you guys to remove this one and you can install a higher quality SSDs, which is 980 Pro from Samsung. These are really durable, really solid, and they have a really life span of uh, many years and many terabytes of read and write. Yeah, you can put up to two terabyte in here. I don't. This one is empty, but I have an SSD here to show for the demonstration. There we go. So you can grab this at Western Digital. So you can grab your NVMe. You want to make sure the notch matches. Slide it inside the jack in 45 degree angle and bring it down. And then you want to put the screw at the back here. You don't need any more to use this uh, heat shield. And you won't be able to use it because of the bend right in here. And honestly, up to two terabytes, you don't need a heat sink. So put this one in a box, keep it away with this one, and use the screw only to keep it in place. You can put an up to two terabyte storage in here. And because you could technically put a four terabyte on this model because the case is empty here. And it can go up to four terabyte because the four terabytes are double sided chip. And in most of the models, you cannot lay flat on the on the motherboard because of the components. In here, there's a, enough clearance in here to put a four terabyte. So you can put a four terabyte in case you want to. All right. So let's put back in the original one in there and put this one right on top. And lock it down. Put the tiny screw right on it. There we go. Now, about the other hard drive is right in here. If yours is empty, you need to remove the four screws. One, two, three, four. Four screws for the caddy. The caddy is a bracket that holds the hard drive in place. So you want to remove these four screws. Once you remove it, you want to lift up the hard drive or the caddy. You want to disconnect this one in here. And this one is being upgraded with a low grade SSD. This is an Adata or Adata. These are really, really low grade. I recommend you with a Samsung Evo or a Crucial. Those are really good brands. Put it in here. Probably yours will be if it just comes with a caddy. Here's another hard drive. This is a mechanical drive. To put the hard drive in here, all you need to do is remove these four screws on the side in here, two on each side, and remove the storage and grab the new storage, put it in, make sure the orientation of the SATA matches the orientation for the SATA in here, the power and the SATA connector. So you wanna bring it down in this position, remove the caddy, put it on top, and put the four screws, okay? You can put up to two terabyte low profile mechanical drive, or you can put a four terabyte SSD in here. But if you go four terabyte mechanical drive, it will be really thick and it will not fit inside the caddy. Plug it, plug in the connector. And your connector might have this cable running under the battery. Sometimes it comes over the battery. Right, put it in place and put the four screws right on top. If you put an SSD here and you have an SSD in there, the speed of the file transfer will be in a lot. So if you want to have a good file transfer between the main drive and the second drive, put an SSD on board. But if you want a reliable source of uh, file saving, put a mechanical drive because those are still a reliable source for having uh, files for a long time. So these two are the only storage that you can upgrade. You can put a four terabyte in here and a four terabyte SSD in here or four terabyte or two terabyte mechanical drive in here at the same time. All right, once you did all the upgrades that you need to, you wanna grab the bottom cover, bring it over, set it straight over. You wanna push the front corners, the bottom, don't press on the back corners. All you wanna do is you just 
tighten up the screw ports on each corner so the cover gets pulled to its uh, on the palm rest. All right. Next, you want to push the corner back in, make sure tiny click sounds, and you start putting the rest of the screws on the bottom cover. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a the video comment or try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next videos. Just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws.